seed of that division uh, really started, and let me read in the fifth, in the fifth chapter, uh, beginning with the 13th verse. Very familiar scripture. Because I think this is uh, important for us to understand that if we as the church fail to be uh, who God's called us to be and we fail to mature to the point and you know when I say mature uh, and unity and stuff like that sometimes people think yeah if they just agree with me we'd be okay uh, you know God knows God knows our heart it's, it can't be about our differences in doctrine. It's got to be about our relationship with God. That's the only, play, only way we get to unity. The only way when we honor God and we begin to receive everything He desires for us to receive. In the 13th verse of the 5th uh, chapter of Matthew says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost its savor... Wherewith shall it be salted? It is then, therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. Now I think that's, that still is a direct relationship now to our maturing. Now that we are the salt of the earth. We're the... We, what we, we as the body of Christ should be we as the body of Christ should be that savor that begins to bring change uh, you know there's the, the you ladies that, that cook and stuff and it's going to lead me into something else to uh, speak of uh, with this but that ingredient, if it's left out, changes the whole flavor. It, some, some recipes, if you leave salt out, it changes the whole flavor. Okay? Uh, l let me, from there, let me go to something. I'll come back to, to Matthew 5. But in Romans, the 12th chapter and the third verse, he says, is given unto every man a measure of faith. Now this came to me by revelation this weekend uh, as some other folk were talking about uh, the gift of faith and I've moved in the gift of faith and I have uh, I've seen others but, but faith, the gift of faith just like any other gift according to the scriptures uh, will fail. Prophecies will fail. Uh, tongues will cease. Uh, the gifts, but it says it's given uh, already given to every man a measure of faith. Now, if we look at that and we begin to understand now, I'm not looking around here trying to see who has the gift of faith and waiting on that. Most of the time, people coming into church and saying, "Oh." I hope this preacher has great faith today so he can meet my need. So he can believe, or she, can believe for me and meet my need. Well, that's not the way it works. The scripture says that many are weak and sickly among us because they discern not the body of Christ. Now, let me show you the body of Christ. You know, if we, just scripturally speaking, if we have two or three come together, he's in the midst. Or if we have two or three thousand come together, he's in the midst. What if we all brought our measure to the table and what if we all brought it? Now we're not waiting on one individual that has the gift of faith. Now we are a people of faith and God begins to radiate through us uh, the, the, the anointing, the, the, the faith, and God begins to cause things. I, I believe the, the faith spoken of in, uh, in Hebrews. Where he says, now faith is the substance of things. He's not talking about a gift of faith now. I think he's talking about the faith 
uh, that these men, these great patriarchs that uh, men and women uh, walked in together and we bring our faith together, every man's already got a measure of faith. Okay? So, uh, your measure out. If you leave your measure out, then we're lacking in that part. Don't leave your measure out. Uh, bring your gift of faith to the, ta to the table. Now, somebody's been saying, uh, uh, but I don't have a gift. I don't have a... Uh, well, you already have. God's already given you a measure of faith. Bring your measure. Put it with my measure. And we'll put our measure with the other measures of the body of Christ. Now we're discerning the body of Christ. We're discerning that faith is present. Uh, I was just thinking uh, about something when I began to see this. When is your faith the strongest? Now, I grant you there have been times whenever I've been all alone and... and, 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 and uh, faith would come and, and I'd believe God. But most of the time our faith is strongest when we come together in agreement. We, we have been times we uh, be in service and maybe the word preached, a good word, a good, and our faith begins to rise or we join hands together we get, we, uh, about some prayer request or something and something happens, our faith becomes stronger. Well, it's not just my faith by itself now, it's our faith, where any two agree is touching any one thing, is one of the scriptures that come on that, but our faith begins to uh, multiply and magnify uh, as we come together as one body and one person. Now let's go back uh, to finish this up now. Uh, let's go back to Matthew, the fifth chapter. And because there's another part of that, he said, you're the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its savor, it's, it's worthless. It's, it's trodden under foot of men, thrown out. Well, that's, that's what I saw when I refer, referred back to uh, what I saw in that chamber as the, the president, is that, that people are so willing to trodden underfoot the values, the Christian values, uh, values that God's built this country on. And I'm not a preacher, a political preacher, but I'm just saying uh, that we can point our finger at them and say how divided they are, but we need to have, and there's no division in our, in our uh, little church here, but, but uh, all over we see division, and, and in the midst of that division it begins to spread. It begins to go into the political arena, arenas. It begins to go uh, in our... Uh, I've lately seen and been appalled at the, uh, the, the divisions or the, the manifestations in our schools. You know, 12-year-olds can walk into the schools with a gun and, and start shooting. Uh, 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 an educated uh, doctor can uh, molest uh, children that's been uh, part of the Olympics for years and, and you find out that somebody knew something and they ignored it. That Where is the salt of the earth? Where is the somebody and, and uh, we can't cave in to every voice that tries to come against what God's saying and what God's doing. If we stand up and say that, you know I can understand why John the Baptist lost his head when he stood up uh, and he, he said to uh, said to Herod, you, it's, uh, it's, it's not right for you to have your brother's wife. It's not right for you to uh, be an adulteress, adulterer. And uh, so we, uh, you know, while we want to love people and we want to minister to people, we also want to keep the standard and be the salt of the earth that brings the savor of God's uh, heart and spirit into the earth. All right, now, let's look at the, the next part. Verse 14 says, And ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I, I looked up the word light and all in, in, in some of this, and it said, You are the manifestation. It not only shows uh, and, and enlightens uh uh, who you are in Christ, but it says you are the manifestation. Ne neither do men light 
a candle and put it under a bushel. The word bushel just means it's a, 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 a thing of measure. And I remember those bushel baskets when I was a kid. But, but you don't light a candle and put a cover over it uh, to hide it. Can I tell you that's what's trying to happen right now uh, in the world is, is uh, if you find somebody with a light, uh, there is a, a movement. Let's put a bushel over that. Let's put a cover. Down. Let's let's hide that because uh, men don't want to see their own deeds. Why? When you light, when your light shines before men, then men begin. It begins to expose men's deeds. Now, call me a legalistic preacher or whatever you want to call me. I'm not trying to be that. Uh, regardless of what you think, I do believe in the grace of God because it's by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, at least any man should boast, it is the gift of God. I understand that. But now whenever the, when I receive the gift of Christ, now I got the responsibility uh, to grow in Him. Uh, but I, you don't put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all in the house. How many people in the house need light? Oh, my, my. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God, glorify your Father which is in heaven. How many want to glorify our Father? How do we do that? We don't just do it by coming in and, and worshiping and hopping to the music and stuff like that. I love to do all that. Uh, but that's not just glorifying God. Glorifying God is whenever you walk before God and somebody can see your works. The works that are of God, not of you. The works of, that are of somebody that's born not of the flesh, but of the Spirit. I'm going to end this part and I'm going to pray for those of you of, of, that are listening maybe by uh, video or whatever. Uh, and then we're going to shut it off and have, and if you want to be a part of this, uh, join us uh, Sunday mornings, 11 o'clock uh, in Rome, Georgia. But if you want to be a part of this, uh, we invite you to come. We're going to uh, kind of change it and get some comments and stuff from those in the congregation right now. Let's pray for those of, that might be listening on the video right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I feel your presence right now. God, I feel your heart for those that have listened today. I feel your heart for those, God, that you want to minister the power of your Spirit to. God, you, Jesus, you said we are the salt of the earth. And God, we, don't, we want to not lose the savor, the, the power of that salt. We want to, 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 to flavor the, the world with your flavor, with your presence, with who you are. God, you said we are the light of the world. And Father, I ask you, God, the only way our light can shine is if you shine through us. And Father, by the power of the Spirit. Now, somebody is locked into lifestyles and, and they're locked into uh, in, in the, the things that they don't want to be in and they don't know how to get out. But God, I thank you, Lord, by the power of the Spirit, you bring people out of darkness. Your Word says you bring us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And Father, I thank you, God, in that light, you begin to shine through us. You begin to do a work through us. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus here today, I ask you, God, just to minister to that grace. Father, if somebody's listening that has never made a profession of faith, God, I invite them right now. I invite them right now. I invite you right now. Call on the name of the Lord. If, you're, if you, you are a Christian, been going to church for years and you're locked into things that you know is not right, I pray right now that God deliver you and bring you into a place of worshiping Him, of honoring and glorifying Him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.